grade sevens. I'm Helen and I've got another natural sciences lesson for you today. What is it that we're going to be looking at? Well, we're focusing on the ideas of useful and wasted energy. So let's have a look at what we mean by these two terms by looking at an everyday situation that you are possibly most familiar with. So let's look at our lawnmower and let's try and identify the energy transfers that are happening as the lawnmower cuts the grass. Well, we must remember that the lawnmower is a system and systems are where we have a group of parts all working together to accomplish a particular process. And in this case, our process is to cut the grass. And we need this system in order to achieve that. But now the system has to do its useful work, which is cutting the grass, and it does this with a number of energy transfers. So let's very briefly describe what some of these energy transfers are. Here in this part of the lawnmower, we have the lawnmower motor or engine, and we know very basically what happens is that we're going to put in a fuel source and this is going to allow the motor to work and the way in which the motor is going to work is it's going to transfer its energy to the blades which are situated underneath the lawnmower and the blades are going to spin around really really fast and in this way, the blades will cut the grass. But of course, the whole system can't work unless we've got you pushing the lawnmower. So let's look at all our energy inputs. We've got the input of fuel. Now, some lawnmowers are what we call petrol lawnmowers, and some lawnmowers are electric lawnmowers. So if it had a little cable, it would be an electric one, but as this one doesn't have a cable, we assume that it's a petrol mower. That is our potential energy going into the system, and the motor then takes that potential chemical energy and converts it into mechanical kinetic energy. But of course, if it weren't for the person who is mowing the lawn, the lawn mower would just stay in one spot and we wouldn't be able to get the lawn mower mowing the rest of the lawn. It would just cut the lawn wherever those blades are. So we need to put you into the picture. Your potential energy is, of course, your food. And that gives you energy to push the lawnmower, which once again is kinetic energy. Now, all of these terms, and as I'm describing it to you, should be very familiar because we've covered the idea of energy transfers from potential energy sources to different kinds of kinetic energy. So this should be clear in your mind. But now let's talk about other things that the lawnmower does. The lawnmower cuts the grass. That is its useful work that it does. But it also gets very hot. After cutting the lawn, if you were to touch this part of the lawnmower, you would find that it's quite warm. In other words, the work that that motor is doing is producing heat energy or thermal energy as well. Also, particularly if you've ever been lying in bed on the weekend early in the morning and the neighbor starts the lawnmower, you know that the lawnmower makes a lot of noise. So we've got heat energy and we've got sound energy, which are not useful. In fact, they're actually a problem because if 
the lawnmower overheats, this can cause the motor to stop working. And of course, we know that the sound is an irritation to everyone else. So we've got useful work that the lawnmower is doing, and we've also got some energy transfers that are resulting in not very useful uh, forms of energy, and that is what we call wasted energy. So in a system, in any system now, moving away from our specific example of the lawnmower, there's useful energy. And that useful energy is transferred to an object or a place. But no process is 100% energy efficient. Energy transfers happen within our system, as we've seen usually from some kind of potential energy to some kind of kinetic energy. But we also have energy transfers to the surroundings. For example, the heat or the sound energy of the lawnmower. And because within the system we're doing useful work, when the energy escapes from the system into the surroundings, it's not helping us do useful work. And so therefore, we name it wasted energy. Now, a good system, a system that is well designed, will try and minimize wasted energy. And what we mean by minimize is keep the amount of wasted energy small and rather allow the amount of energy that's transferred within the system to be maximized or made more. So we can say that the systems that we have in place have an input energy that is usually some kind of fuel or potential energy like your food if you're going to be doing work or like the fuel or petrol for the lawnmower and it has an output energy. So some of the output energy is going to be useful but some of the output energy is also going to be wasted. So systems such as appliances that you may use in the kitchen, tools that you may use to do different jobs, vehicles, machines, they all provide us with a useful energy output. But, here's the big but, not all of that energy is transferred as we want it. So when we use a machine or design a tool, we have an aim. And the aim is linked to the useful energy. But some of the energy is transferred to the surroundings as wasted energy or simply not useful energy. Now, let's have a look at these different appliances that you may be familiar with and let's try and identify the useful energy transfers that are going on. In other words, what we have designed this particular item or object to actually do. The energy transfers associated with its design and our aim and the intention of the appliance or the object, that's going to be our useful energy. And other energy that we can't make use of, that's going to be our wasted energy. So let's start off with a light bulb. What is the intention of the design of this light bulb? Well, simply from its name, we know that the useful energy that we want from this system is light. But if you've ever had the misfortune of touching the light bulb, once it's been working, we know that heat energy is also produced. And we haven't designed the light bulb to warm up our hands or to warm up our home. So producing heat energy is something that we would, in this case, consider to be wasted energy. 
Let's look now at our fan. What do we design a fan to do? What is its useful energy transfers? Well, we're going to put electricity into the fan and the electrical energy is going to be converted into mechanical kinetic energy that is going to turn the blades. So our useful form of energy is mechanic kinetic energy, turning the blades, which moves the air, which keeps us cool. Wasted energy? Well, if your fan has been working for a while and you touch the area where the little motor is, it's going to produce heat. Also, some fans make a sound. Some fans are very noisy and some fans have been designed to make the noise a lot less. What about this item? A blender or a food processor. The useful energy is very, very similar to the fan. We want the blades to turn. We want mechanical kinetic energy. But the wasted energy, you can't speak to anyone when the blender is working because there is so much sound energy that is produced. And also, if you touch the motor, you'll find that it gets hot. In fact, on the instructions, you'll probably read, don't use the blender for more than a minute at a time because the motor will overheat. Let's look at the drill. Useful energy, once again, is the mechanical kinetic energy, but our wasteful energy, again, a loud noise, sound, and touching where the motor is, you'll feel that it produces heat energy as well. The hairdryer, we want the mechanical energy, we want the mechanical kinetic energy to blow the air out of the hairdryer and we also want that air to be hot. So we want the heat, but do we need the sound? Does the sound dry our hair in any way? The sound is the wasted energy. The candle, we use a candle very much as we use a light bulb for light energy. But the wasted energy here is, whoops, also, I'm getting lost. Let's go back. The wasted energy is our heat as well. So what you're seeing here is we're able to design a product or an appliance or some object that does work. But it seems like not all of the energy we put into the object is going to be transferred out or as output energy that is useful. Now remember the law of conservation of energy. We can't create energy. We can't destroy the energy. The energy is only transferred in a system. So our energy input in terms of this hairdryer is electric energy, electrical energy. That's our input. We've already established that our output is movement, in other words, kinetic energy. And we've also got heat energy to dry our hair. But our wasted energy here is sound. Now, if we have a look at the law of conservation of energy, it tells us that our energy input, here, yeah, our electrical energy, must equal our energy output and our wasted energy. So putting the useful and the wasted energy together, we should arrive at what the energy output, in fact, was. So always remember that we've got to keep in mind that law of conservation. And in our next lesson, we're going to start exploring this 
equation between useful energy, wasted energy, and it must equal our energy input. Thank <laughs> you.